I want to take a few moments and talk about some of the health risks that we could have using these 3D printed masks. There isn't a lot of talk about some of the problems, and I think if you're going to kind of put your bets and your health in one of these masks, you need to learn about those. And I do think that they're a good option, but we just need to iron out a few little problems that could potentially be a threat. Now I'm going to also say that I want this video to be a collaborative, helpful video, and if anybody knows little more than what I'm going to share here, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that do, or any corrections to anything I say that may be wrong, please write them in the comments down below. We all need to be learning from each other, and that is the best outcome is we design a mask that is really good and safe. Now, one of the problems that keeps coming up is depending on how good your printer is, depending on the material you're using, most of us are using PLA because our printers are designed for that. There could be microscopic holes in the plastic that we can't see. Now, it may hold water, but water molecules are a lot bigger than air molecules. And the risk is you could be breathing contaminated air if you have microscopic pinholes in your mask. There's an easy answer for that. Just give it a paint job. And what I like to use is plastic dip. It's basically a rubber coating. It's a pretty inexpensive. And again, any links to references or any links to materials that I'm using here, I will put a link down below. And please feel free to add your opinions and also links to materials. I'll make sure I approve those so other people can learn and, and hopefully make a good mask. So now that we have a mask that is coated in rubber and we assume there are no microscopic holes, it should be a pretty good safe mask. Now we need to talk about media. And I think that's where a lot of us are also failing is what type of filtration do we use? And a lot of people are using HEPA filters from furnaces and are using HEPA filters from vacuum cleaners. And I'm gonna say that uh, you need to be very careful if that's what you're going to do because some of those filters are made of glass and you will be breathing glass dust in, and you definitely don't wanna be wearing a mask every single day, breathing glass dust in, because basically in about 10 years, you're gonna find out that that was a very bad idea when your lungs are all scarred up and you can't breathe anymore. It's very dangerous, so you need to make sure that any filters you're using is safe for you and don't contain any glass materials, such as some of the HEPA filters for furnaces and vacuum cleaners. Um, there was a study done by a couple of people, and I really like what they found out. They basically did a study on the best material that they could find. They had a particulate air scanner. I might be saying that right or wrong, but it basically would test materials and how big of uh, parts and pieces would pass through the material. The best filtering they found was these blue shop towels, specifically two brands. Three brands were mentioned in the article, but two brands uh, they really liked, and that was the Toolbox brand and the Zep brand. Uh, they two layers of this with their cotton mask gave them near N95 filtering. That's ultimately what we're after is N95 or better. That's these masks here. Um, so two layers of shop towel uh, with their cotton mask was what they determined was really good. And so that's how I decided I was going to build mine, at least at this point, unless I can find a better answer. As far as cotton, I'm just using makeup pads, you can, little makeup rounds, I guess is what you call them. Uh, you can buy these in pretty much any store, you can order them. And they look like this, they're just a round of cotton. And I am putting two layers of towels, one on top of the filter and one on bottom of the filter. So here you can see the configuration, two towels, cotton filter in the middle. And then I'm using a mask that has a canister. You drop the filters down in the canister and you screw it onto the mask. And now you should have filtering material that is really good and safe and it's not going to kill you. Uh, so that's an option. Uh, the problem I found was it was a little more restrictive for me to breathe when I was getting busy and running up and down stairs. So I made a little bit of a better mask. We'll talk about this as well. The next problem is you're breathing in and out of this mask all day, at least I assume, and you're going to have a perfect environment for bacteria. So the actual virus might not kill you, but you could get sick from the bacteria. And so you need to make sure you're wiping this down on a daily fashion. And you can use this alcohol, wipe it down. If you don't have any alcohol, you can, you can literally just take the filter pads out, scrub it down with soap and water, and let it dry out and use it the next day. And that would make it relatively safe. If you can get a hold of antibacterial PLA, that is an awesome option. But this stuff's getting harder and harder to find as well. 
Now I want to talk about gaskets and some issues that we're going to have there too. Um, this particular mask actually had a printable gasket. You print it in TPU and TPU is a soft kind of pliable rubber. And that was kind of a nice feature, which was one reason I landed on this design. Um, but it gives you a nice little gasket. But I also found you don't need a gasket if you have a good fit. And to make these things fit good on your face, uh, what I have found is 140 to 150 degree water. Um, you know, put it on, the, on your burner, turn up the heat, and you can dip this down in the water and pull it out. And it's very pliable for a good 30 seconds or so. So you can hold it up to your face and it's not hot enough to burn you. Uh, and you can still mold your face out um, and get a really good seal without a gasket. So that's a good tip if you're printing in PLA. But again, if you can print the TPU and make a gasket, that's a great option. A lot of people are using EDPM type rubbers, which I have here. Uh, actually, this is some type of foam core rubber, but this is EDPM. Uh, EDPM can be a skin irritant, and I'm not sure I would want to have this on my face all day long. Now, if you're just building a mask to run into the grocery store and run back out, you're probably gonna be okay. But if you're wearing this thing, you know, eight plus hours a day, every day for months on end, uh, I'd be concerned that you could leach some toxins into your skin. So this probably is not a uh, long-term safe bet. But again, if you're just running into the store and out, it's probably fine. Now, another problem is the mask is only as good as how well it seals against your face. So you need to have some type of stretchy mechanism to keep that mask tight. And I couldn't find any elastic, but I found these. And they're really inexpensive. They're basically tourniquets. You can buy these in a bag of a hundred. I believe it was about eight bucks for a hundred. You can cut them in half and you have a really nice stretchy material that makes a great strap and it holds up really well. So that is an option if you can still find these. Now I want to talk about why I did the double cartridge design and that was, again, it was pretty restrictive with one, one filter on this mask. Um, you can build this with a regular extra filter, you know, the two regular filters on each side and that's okay. But when you start really huffing and puffing and run up and down stairs, you still need more surface area. There's a guy that designed these little canisters and I'm not going to take time to explain it uh, in too much detail because he did an awesome video. Um, but basically it is a double filter system that uses those makeup rounds, which you can also use the blue shop towels. And what it does is you're not breathing in tandem through both pieces at the same time. Uh, there is little, um, I guess you would call them uh, routes that air can take all the way around. And they're basically acting independently as if they were a double canistered filter. Uh, again, really hard to explain. Watch his video. It, it'll make more sense to you. He's better explaining things than I am, that's for sure. Uh, even with those on, I found that extra heavy activity was pretty difficult to breathe in. So I went from the single canister to his design, and then I used two of those. So basically, you're breathing through the surface area of that times four. Uh, again, it's not going to make a lot of sense to you watch this video, but it works really well. It's a decent design. It gets around the restrictive air breathing. But that brings me to another problem that we need to talk about that is also an, a health concern that you need to be aware of. So in a standard design, and this is a little abnormal actually. This guy was brilliant when he designed this. He put a flat piece across the top and your intake air is all around these little notches. And his idea was if somebody coughed at you and their germs landed on the pad, that could be bad. But if it lands on this piece of plastic, it doesn't really matter because your air is coming around the sides. I like that design. The guy's brilliant. He's, he's look at some of his other stuff he has made. It's, it's pretty good stuff. But um, the problem that you really have is you are breathing hot, moist air through the filter, and then you're breathing hot, moist air back through the filter the other direction. And you're gonna use materials that are absorbent to water, like cottons and, and shop towels. And so after a while, you're going to take that pad and it's gonna be very moist. And they're also saying that A, moist pads don't work as good as dry pads and um, you're building a, a nice little environment for bacteria. Uh, and the standard industry workaround for this, even in the N95 masks, 
is they put valves on them, usually at the bottom. And when you breathe in, you get fresh, clean air through the media. And when you breathe out, it's unfiltered through that valve, that little vent. And there's a lot of people making masks with those vents. And that's awesome, but it doesn't protect somebody else if you're wearing this mask and you're infected and don't know it. You're basically breathing out all of your contaminated air into the open environment. So it's a concern. So one thing that I thought about doing and I may do is redesign this so that there are valves on these guys so that when you breathe in, air can come in, but put another external filtered cartridge here. And that way when you're breathing out, it's also filtering your air to protect other people. But more importantly, that keeps the media in the cartridges dry. They're not getting any moist air from your breath because you have a one-way valve and you're expelling all of that moist air through another cartridge that may get wet uh, and it probably will get moist in the bad growth of bacteria, but you're not breathing through that moist wet pad and you're stopping for the most part any loose particulates in the air from getting to your coworkers and friends. So it would kind of be the best of both worlds. You're still filtering the air coming into your lungs, but you're also filtering air coming out of the port. I have not had time to redesign this max to do that. And uh, if any of you guys are CAD people, by all means, take that idea and run with it. Maybe you can come up with something really clever and really good that would help protect people. Now that brings me to kind of the final topic I want to talk about is decontaminating these masks. There's a lot of crevices and little areas in this thing that is just going to be pretty hard to wipe down. But one thing we do know is that the virus degrades over time. So a lot of us are coming home and we strip down all of our clothes and gear and we throw them off in the corner and we let it sit for a couple of days because the virus will deactivate itself. It basically degrades enough that it's safe and to handle. And so what I have found out to the best of my knowledge is you're safe for um, basically 24 hours on cardboard and paper and anything that's a little bit harder could take longer. So my rule of thumb is plastics. I'm, I'm going with three days. If somebody knows better, please let me know. My intentions are to print about four of these masks, maybe five. And every day I'm going to come home, take one off, throw it in a box and not touch it for a couple of days. And then I'll decontaminate it as best of my ability and put new pads in it and use that the following day. That way you can just kind of forget it. And hopefully the virus degrades enough that when you're back decontaminated again and wiping it down with alcohol, it's a little bit safer to work with. It's so my thoughts on that. I think time is one of those things that can help us. Uh, but then you need multiple masks to be able to work with, specifically if you're working five days a week like I am. Now, I know this is a little off beaten to my normal videos. Normally, I build a lot of things and I fix a lot of things, but I just felt that the risks that are being taken on printing some of these plastic masks need to be um, looked at a little bit. And I know we can be a little more careful about it and make something a little better. And I also have a lot of faith that we can have some collaborative uh, information out there where we're all helping each other design a better mask. So again, if you know a better mask, uh, you know better designs, better media, better filter, uh, please comment down below. I, we would all like to learn from each other. Uh, if you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos. At the very least, you might be entertained.